audio jungle. In this video, we're gonna talk about the subtraction algorithm. So algorithm is just a fancy word for the step-by-step -step process. So how do we subtract? That's really what we're gonna do. We're gonna look at subtracting large numbers. Again, I'm assuming that you already have all your one digit facts memorized uh, that you have practiced those. So subtraction algorithm, how do we subtract larger numbers is the question. So let us look at a problem. So let's see, what if somebody asked me, what is the difference? See me being tricky and slipping in our vocabulary words? Isn't that just like a math teacher? Between 268 and 43. Okay, so we've talked about it before. I'm gonna talk about it again. It's one of my favorite themes. This is a subtraction problem. The difference between 268 and 43 is asking me to minus. And subtraction and addition are the same thing but in opposite directions. So the two go hand in hand. So we learned in the last video, 1.5b, that when you add, everybody marches in a straight row. The same kind of numbers can only add with the same kind of numbers. The exact same rule applies to a subtraction problem. When I go to subtract them, it's really important that I line it up so that the ones line up with the ones and the tens with the tens and the hundreds with the hundreds. And again, I'm gonna ask you guys, don't be lazy. Please write your symbol here. Do yourself a favor, know what you're doing. I'm subtracting. Okay, and again, just like with addition, I'm gonna go from right to left, okay? And so eight minus three, that's a real straightforward fact. It's five. I can always count down on my fingers, eight, seven, six, five. I've subtracted three. Okay, six minus four is two. Now here, a lot of people will just say, and drop the two. And I don't think of it that way. The way I remember it is, anytime you have a blank in math, there's nothing there. The number that means nothing is zero. So it's like there's an invisible zero right there. And two minus zero, if I have two and I don't take away anything, still leaves me with two. Beautiful. So this is 225. You say that's really easy. Indeed, it is. Let's look at some trickier problems. Okay, guys, next problem says take 85 from 632. I'm trying to see if I can trick you with some words. But just to let you know, this is a subtraction problem. But be really careful because the word from is an order switcher. So if I say take 85 from 632, you know what, probably a better word would be subtract. Maybe that'll help you. Subtract 85 from 632. Okay, but still, nonetheless, the word from is an order switcher, meaning that the number that comes last needs to come first in the problem, and the number that came first needs to come last in the problem. Again, the reason why I switched the order is because I saw this word from. That throws a lot of my students in a loop. And unlike with addition, with subtraction, order matters. You've got to pay attention. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this problem. Again, I'd like you to note that the ones line up with the ones, the tens with the tens, and we are going to move right to left when we subtract. Okay. So, right away, with this problem, I have an issue. If I try, if I only have two objects up here, and I try to wait, take away five objects, I'm in trouble. How can I take five away from two? And that's the real problem. So I've got to do what's called a borrowing. I've got to borrow from the guy next door. Basically, Mr. Two does not have enough money to go around. I always think of it like money. It makes it easier for me. So two is going to come knocking on his neighbor's door and say, can I borrow from you? What will happen is you'll always take the number next door and go down by one. So three down by one brings us to two. 
But you have to think about what this means. This is the tens column here. This is the tens column here. It's not the ones column. So if I take one away from here, what am I really borrowing? I'm really borrowing 10. And so this two could, doesn't go up by one. He goes up by 10 and he turns into 12. That's the number 12 now. Okay, so now 12 take away five. That is a math I can do. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. 12 take away five is seven. Okay. And now once again, I'm faced with a dilemma. I've only got two and I'd like to take away eight. I'm going to have to borrow again. Knock, knock, come knocking on your neighbor's door. He goes down by one and you go up by 10. So we have a 12 again. 12 take away eight is four. And five take away nothing is just five. Very nice. One thing I wanted to point out to you is that division can get a little tricky. Division. What am I talking about, guys? Subtraction. Okay, here we go. Let's try again. Subtraction can get a little tricky when there's zeros involved. Okay, a lot of my students get thrown all for loops. They really don't get the zeros. So let's take some time to play here. Let's do 800 minus 375. So once again, to do the math, I'm going to line it up vertically here, one number under the other with the ones, tens, and hundreds all in a nice row. And I'm subtracting, not dividing, so I'll write subtract there. Okay, so once again, as I go to subtract here from right to left, I'm faced with a dilemma. I cannot take five away from zero. We've got nothing to take, and so I'm gonna to have to go to borrow. But notice what happens. When this little guy comes knocking on his neighbor's door, knock, knock, He's broke too. There's nothing to borrow from over here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to keep on moving down the row until we encounter a number that has some value. Okay, so zero's got nothing to borrow from, so I need to come over here to eight. Eight is the first guy I think of with some money. Okay, so he will go down by one to seven, and he will put his buddy up to ten. Okay. But I cannot start my subtraction yet because I have to start way back here at the back. So this is going to start a chain reaction. Now that he's got some money, this guy can borrow. So this 10 will go down to a 9, and this last guy will come up to a 10. Now a lot of you guys are in the bad habit of going straight to writing the 9, and I'm going to ask you not to do that yet. Stick with me because I really want you to understand this concept. Now I'm going to do my subtraction. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 7 is 2, and 7 minus 3 is 4, 425. And since so many of you guys really struggle with these problems and get them wrong when there's zeros around, I'm going to show you how to check your work. In math, you can always check your work by moving backwards. Well, we had said already quite a few times that addition and subtraction are opposites. So if I'd like to subtract, check my subtraction, what I should do is take the bottom two numbers, add them back together, and see if I get to my total. So let's try adding 375 and 425. 5 and 5 is 10. Carry the 1, 7, 2, that's 9, and another one gives me 10, and there's 800. Check. Look at that. It worked. I wanted to finish by doing this challenge problem with you because a lot of my students, um, I give them one or two zeros and they can kind of deal. But I start getting a lot of zeros, a big line of zeros, and they freak out. So let's try doing this one together, okay? So I'm taking the number 8,007,000 and I'm subtracting 683,845. Once again, I start on the right in the ones column. And when I look at this, I've got nothing. So I clearly can't take away five. So once again, I said that we're going to keep going until we find a number that has some value. So no value to zero, no value to zero. But here's the first number that has some value. So six, seven will go down by one to six. And he'll bump the very next number up to 10. And then remember, I'm just going to chain, keep on borrowing on down the line. So the 10 will go down to nine, the zero will go up to 10. Again, the 10 will go down to 9, and this last guy will go up to 10. There we go. Now, I can start subtracting. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 4 is 5. 
9 minus 8 is 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. I get stuck again here. I've got a 0. I can't take away 8. So I'll just do that same process again. I'll go to the first number who's got some value. That's 8. He'll go down to 7, bump his buddy up to 10. Again, I need to bring it on down so that this number has some value. So my 10 will go down to 9, and my 0 will go up to 10. There we go. So 10 take away 8 is 2, 9 take away 6 is 3, and 7 minus the invisible 0 is 7. Now, this number can be really challenging for you to read. My recommendation is before you ever try to read a number, you place the commas. So remember to place commas again. We start at the right and we count by threes. One, two, three, comma. One, two, three, comma. So this is seven million three hundred and twenty-three thousand one hundred and fifty-five. I want you to go to Quizlet. The set you're going to choose is set 1.5C and it's called multi-digit subtraction. I would really like you to practice that in learn mode. I'm not finding scatter very helpful on these. We need to actually just practice doing the math, guys. Make sure that works for you and then join me for the multiplication video.